Transitions, who doesn't love them? DaVinci Resolve has loads of them and they can be used to jazz up your videos, animate photos, logos, and even titles without messing about with keyframes and that dead easy to use. But there are a few quick tips and tricks which you need to know to make sure you're making the most of them. But first, we need to transition into this video's sponsor, NVIDIA Studio and Scan Computers. NVIDIA Studio is an initiative to use the RTX GPU to accelerate creative applications and design laptops and desktop systems that are perfect for creative professionals like us. Applications like DaVinci Resolve use RTX GPU acceleration to improve timeline performance, meaning effortless edits, faster exports using NVNC encoding, and the NVIDIA Tensor Cores allow you to use the awesome DaVinci Resolve Studio effects like Speed Warp, Face Refinement, and Magic Masks effortlessly. And Scan Computers are one of the biggest and most trusted NVIDIA Studio resellers in Europe. So click the link below to check out their line of NVIDIA Studio certified laptops from the likes of Gigabyte, Acer, and Razer, plus their own line of award-winning 3XS NVIDIA Studio approved custom systems built specifically for creators. One of which I'm using right now, but more about my own system at the end of this video. So first transition tip, change the default length. In DaVinci Resolve, click on the words DaVinci Resolve top left-hand corner, and then go to Preferences. When the little window pops up, click on User at the top, and then from the menu on the left, go to Editing. Down here in the general settings, you've got standard transition duration. You can select between seconds and frames, and then you just enter the number in there. If you want every transition to be a default of 1.1 seconds, put 1.1 in there and job done. Easy peasy. Tip number two, changing the transition length on the timeline. So you all probably know that you can click on the transition and drag to make it longer or shorter. But what you may not know, if you right click, you can go to change transition duration, or you can use the keyboard shortcut of control D to change it that way. Or as a third option, give the transition a click on the timeline so it's highlighted in red. In the inspector, top right hand corner, go to the transition tab, and from here you've got duration. Click and hold your mouse on the actual number and you can just slide it to the right or to the left, same on the frames, to increase or decrease the length of this transition, getting it exactly as you want it. Perfect, next one, shift it. We've all done it, we've all grabbed a transition, we've gone to put it on this edit point here and we've accidentally put it over to the left or the right, like so. You don't need to delete it and do it again. If you simply right click the transition, you've got these options. Start on edit, we'll put it on the right hand side. End on edit, we'll put it on the left hand side. And then of course you've got center on edit. Alternatively, give that transition a click in the inspector, once again, you've got this alignment area. You can just use the little icons to pop it from the left, center, and the right, quick and easy. But what if it won't shift? There's a common error you probably see in DaVinci Resolve with transitions, and that's regarding handles. Let me show you how to fix that. If you've ever gone to grab a transition, put it on this edit point, and it won't let you put it on either the left or the center. It'll only go on the right-hand side or the left, depending on which way you're working. That's because this video doesn't have any handles. So let me show you what that means. This is the very start of this video. You see, I can't drag it any further left. There's no additional footage past this point. And DaVinci Resolve needs this. It needs a little bit of an overlap in order to create the transition. So instead, what I'm gonna do, put that back in its place. I'm gonna grab the trim tool by clicking on this icon, or I could just hit T on my keyboard. I'm gonna trim this just to the left a little bit, and you can see we've got the little white box. That just means that we now have an overlap between these two clips. So if I now grab a transition, I can put it onto the left, onto the right, or in the center as I need it. Right, my next tip, they're not just for videos. You can use them for videos, photos, PNGs, even titles. So here I've got this logo. I've got my DaVinci Resolve logo, and I wanna animate it to fly in but I don't wanna mess around with keyframes. So instead, from the video transitions, just scroll down until you get to the motion area. And the best one to use for this is the one called push. Give it a click and drag it and put it onto your logo like so. And then if I hit play, it's simply gonna slide in from the left by default. If we give the transition a click, in the inspector, we've got these options within the transitions area, and we've got this preset, we've got push left, push right, push up, and push down. Underneath the logo, I've got a title, text, which just says DaVinci Resolve, and I want the same thing to happen. So I'm gonna grab push, I'm gonna pop it on there, whoops, I've put it in the wrong place, so I'm just gonna shift it over to the center using our alignment, and now we've got both of these animated in from the left-hand side, easy peasy. So there you go, it works, but the motion is a little bit boring. We need to change that up, and we can do that with my next tip, and that's easy. So I'm just gonna delete this DaVinci Resolve one for now, and we'll just go back to this logo. As you can see, it flies in, but it's looking a little bit dull. 
and that's because it has no acceleration. I'm just gonna zoom into my timeline a little bit. You can see on the transition, we've got this faded sort of line that represents the acceleration of the transition. If I give it a click in the inspector, come down to ease and it's currently set to none. If I change that to in, you can see this little line changes. And what in means is it will start off slow and then speed up at the end, giving us this. If we change it to out, that will reverse it. So it will start off fast and then slow down. And if we change it to in and out, it will give us that S curve, which means it'll be slow at the beginning, fast in the middle, slow at the end, giving us a real nice little animation. Unfortunately, there isn't a way to save that as the default. You do always have to remember to go transition, in and out, job done. But what if you want to copy that transition to other edit points where you can do that really quickly and easily with my next tip, and that's copying transitions. So we've got our push, and I want to copy it to all the different edit points of here. So we've got a nice looking animation. All we're going to do, give it a click on your timeline, hold down the Alt key or Option if you're on a Mac, keep in that held, click once again, and then we can just drag this transition to the end and it will copy it exactly as it was, keeping our in and out animation. We're then going to do the same thing here, give it a click, hold the Alt key, give it a click again and hold, drag down. It's gone in the wrong place. I'm just going to shift it over using my alignment. Job done. We've animated those at exactly the same time with the same transition. Boom! For my next tip, we're going to use a solid color to create a solid color transition. In DaVinci Resolve, go to the effects library, generators, grab a solid color and put that across your edit point like so. I want to make this solid color about a second or two in length. So I'm just going to go with that and we want it dead in the middle of this edit point. I'm gonna give the solid color a click in the inspector, generator, color, change this to something that looks a little bit nicer. I'm gonna go with an orange. Then I'm gonna grab a transition, any one will do. I'm gonna go with this triangle left and pop it on this edit point like so. I'm gonna shift this over using my alignment. I'm gonna change my easing to in and out. Now I'm gonna replicate this transition towards the end so they meet in the middle. And now we've got this nice looking solid color animation. I've actually made a whole video about using these solid colors to create real simple but awesome effects in DaVinci Resolve, so make sure to check that one out as well. Don't forget to scroll down the list because there's some gems hidden further down in the Fusion Transitions area. Most people forget that if you keep scrolling down, you get to the Fusion Transitions, and we've got things like Circles, Camera Shake, Brightness Flash, Drop Warp, Film Strip, there's loads of cool transitions within here. If you keep going down even further, you've got this Resolve FX Transitions area, and there's a really great one in here called Burn Away. I'm gonna drop that on my solid color, lengthen this out a little bit, and as you can see, we've got this really cool burn style transition. For my next tip, we're gonna use some different transitions, and we're gonna to start to customize them just that little bit more. So I've got my solid color and my logo once again. I'm gonna go and grab a transition, which I might not ordinarily use. So I've got this hexagon. We'll pop that on there. We're gonna center it, and we'll lengthen it out a little bit. We'll give it a click in the inspector. If in doubt, in and out, we're gonna change that to in and out. And now we've got this transition. But if we wanna customize it a little bit more, there's loads of options within here. So we can change the preset, we can use an offset to move it around, we can change an aspect ratio, or the rotation, and even add a border. If we add a border, it will default to white. We can change the color of that using this little color picker here. Or alternatively, if we click the feather, we now have this feathered effect instead. So I'm gonna turn off feather, I'm gonna change the color, let's just go with a nice little gray, and now we've got this transition instead, which actually looks kinda cool. I'm gonna turn my logo back on, we'll copy this across, same as before, and now I've got this real nice transition. Now if you wanna get really fancy, you can start to animate those controls. So I've got this transition, I've got my in and out, but I wanna add a bit of a spin to it. So if I give it a click, inspector, I've got my rotation and I can change the rotation. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my playhead at the very beginning of the hexagon, and then I'm gonna to go to my rotation, and I'm just gonna click on this little icon here to add a keyframe. I'm then gonna move my playhead to the end, and I want it to spin around 180 degrees. So I'm gonna put 180 in the rotation, and then hit enter. That's gonna tell DaVinci Resolve that I want it to be zero degrees at the start, 180 at the end, giving us this nice little spin, just adding a little extra something something, to that transition. If you're not happy with the way it spins or the easing, you can start to mess around and do some custom curves with the animation as well. On the transition on the timeline, you've got this little diamond icon. Give that a click, and then you'll get this box appear underneath. In the top right hand corner, you've got this little S curve. Give that a click as well. And then you can actually see the curves for the keyframes that we've added. You may need to zoom in a little bit, like so. And then I've got this little drop down. So I'm just gonna turn off the rotation for now, just so we've got this transition curve. And this shows us the curve of our animation. 
So if I give it a click, we can actually click on the handles at the ends and we can lengthen those out. We can play with it to get it looking exactly as we want it. So if I want it to be a little bit faster in the middle, I'll do something like that. And now we've got an even faster animation. If I hold down my Alt key and then click on the line, I could add additional handles so I can get really crazy and do some cool custom curves. If I use that drop down once again, I'm going to go back to my rotation because we turn this on. At the minute, it's just linear. So I'm going to click on my start handle and then change it using these icons at the top. If you click on this middle one here, it will just figure out which type of curve it needs to be. So we're going to click on the end one. Same thing again, click on the middle one. We've now got a nice little S curve for our spin giving us a transition that looks something like this. If you've customized a transition, but you want to change the type without losing your customization, you can do that too. So I've got my hexagon here, which we've just made with all of our spin. If I go and grab an oval, for example, put it on top, it's going to override everything. You can see we don't have the easing, we don't have any of our options. I'm just going to undo that. Instead, if I click on my hexagon, in the inspector, the transition type at the top, I can use the drop down. Let's change this to an eye iris instead. And now it's an eye iris, but we've still got our border and we've still got our custom easing curve. So now we've got something that looks like this. You can just go through that list, changing it to something else while keeping all of your easing until you're perfectly satisfied with your transition. So now we've done all that hard work, you probably want to save these transitions. And you can do that by saving as a transition preset. Right click any transition on the timeline. And then you've got this option, create a transition preset. Give that a click and then this window will appear. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call this 180 hex and then just click on OK. I'm going to delete this from my timeline. From the video transitions area within the effects library, scroll down until you see this user area. And now I've got a 180 hex. I can give that a click, drag it on like so, lengthen it out, do what I need to do. It's got all of our easing. It's got our custom rotation. It's even got our border. And then I hit play and it's there ready to go. If you don't want to have to click and drag every time, you can set a transition as your standard and then apply it using a keyboard shortcut. So I'm just going to delete this one off the timeline. I'm going to go to my 180 hex. I'm going to right click and then I've got an option here to set as standard transition. Once you've clicked that, you'll see this little red icon on the left hand corner. What that means is if I click any edit point on my timeline like so, so it's highlighted in green and then use the keyboard shortcut of control and T, it will automatically apply that transition to that edit point. So let's go to somewhere else. Let's go over to this edit point here. Give it a click, control T, and it will drop that hexagon on there like so. Now, big thanks to today's sponsor, NVIDIA Studio and Scan Computers. All of this video was recorded and edited on my Scan 3XS NVIDIA Studio certified PC, rocking the beastly NVIDIA RTX 3090, AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, and 64 gigabytes of RAM which was a huge step up from my old system and absolutely true through everything I throw at it in DaVinci Resolve. All of which just means that I'm able to keep creating these videos for you guys. So big thanks to NVIDIA Studio and Scan for sponsoring this video. And please do check out Scan's full lineup of NVIDIA Studio approved systems by clicking on the link down in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. See ya.